Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of an Aussie farming in the Philippines. Well, it's four o'clock. Just finished goat herding and come in with the goats. We've had a nice two hours of eating yummy, 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 yummy. So, this morning, you see where we are here. So, we employed Wilfredo and his son in law to be, and we're putting in some reinforcements along the fence line here. And I'm going to put some fixed some, um, cement or something special I've got in mind on behind it. So, we uh, reinforced the bank because when they actually the flood come through. But when they cleaned it, they actually cleaned some of our side off instead of all on that side, wankers. So you can see the problem is here, look, see? This is our problem, Charlie Brown. Problem. Problem. So they're big, <laughs> big pace, I tell you, putting in. But um, I'll dig out behind on this side and um, they'll all get filled in. So we're only going up to this pole here. So today it looks like they've got about half, nearly half done. Nearly half done on it but um, I've got to make it solid otherwise that fence that um, we made this was the fence made by me and Bob and well Frido and as you can see it's sort of like it's nice and look at that okay so we'll get all this done in behind here and um, it'll be solid like a, a concrete wall behind here but what can you say Charlie Brown what can you say I don't know how deep they can get them down. If we have to come back tomorrow and hit them again, we'll hit them again because I made them five foot, five and a half foot long. He's on these ones here. But I said if they're not, if they're still moving, then we've got to put, go down deeper. Don't go down another foot. That's no problem. Have a rest and come back tomorrow. Onto it. But it will work. I know it will work. I know it will. I know it will. Definitely. Reinforce this, fill it up full of concrete behind it all. Should be right. This will act like a um like boards for it. You now like um what do you call it? Form work. Like form work, that will fuck them. Sam, the board! Polly! Polly's just totally ignoring me. <laughs> Polly! Come on! Sam! Ba! Well, the sky's going ugly, so it may rain. Well, this is the corn that the chick planted, look. And um, it was going all right. She got up to about, it's probably about six, eight inches tall when the flood come through. Totally stuffed it all. Totally stuffed it all. Because all this was water way up here. Way up here, past all those, past those bags up to the um, longest trees up over here. It was all water. See, in the old days, the creek used to come down through here, in the old days. And come around through here on these trees, cross that bank over there, and go back down into there. So what we did when we filled all this up, we got uh, 50 odd truckloads of um, 11 meters per truck, and we dumped it all in here, and we lifted all this up another two feet, and we actually reclaimed it all, and we dug the drain out along the boundary line. So the boundary is our fence here, and we actually run from this pole here on this side of the creek all the way down. But uh, I can't get a fence in there, that's why I put the temporary electric fence in there, if you can see. But normally our fence go, our boundary lines go from here to that bamboo all the way down on that side. You right, big boy? Come on, let's go up home. Right, so oh, school's back on again, all the kiddies leaving, leaving school, heading home. Long walk, you know, it's about a two mile walk for them. But um, they're lucky. Some kids do more, honestly. Some kids, we're way up there in the village, and they've come down here and they'll walk, live home. Some go that same distance again on the opposite side. So some of them can walk up to um, four miles, four miles easy a day to school and back. And we're talking little kids too, not just the high school kids. We're doing those little fuckers, you know, the little ones who are on um, third grade, fourth grade, shit like that, you know, like. I wouldn't let my kids walk to school at that age, but what can they do? You know, they've got no transportation. Polly, come on, yep. Sam, yep. You know, there's, there's no transportation or anything. They don't, they don't have money for a motorbike. You know, they've got, people don't realise how poor the Philippines is. You know, they think, they think, oh, let's go and retire in the Philippines. They think, well, seriously, a lot of Westerners think that it's just like, say, say, um, 
somewhere in the States, you know, some country in the, some, some city in the States, they think it's just like that, but it's the Philippines, where it's the same structure, the same roads, footpath gutters, running water, electricity, uh, it's the same thing, only the people look different to the Americanos, and they speak a different language and eat different food. But they think that everything else is the same. Well, it's fucking not. You know, like, um, look at it here. All these kids walk to school from third grade onwards. Seriously, third grade kids. And even uh, little Pat Pat next door here, she, they walk her to the school and back each day, and uh, she's in kindergarten. Serious, 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 serious. Here's Papa, got his durians. Ah, more fell, Papa. Good. So Papa's got a couple more durians. Little ones, these, these are from the big tree. The other tree is the uh, Thai one where they're really big and solid. So we've got our corn dried, so we're happy with that. But um, the weather has gone absolutely ugly. But if um, Wilfredo and son-in-law to be finish, like um, soon, which I think they will be at 4.30, that gives half an hour I can get all this packed up. Now the thing is when you pack up right, uh, corn guys, when you pack up corn, when you load it all into the sack, you don't tie it off. You gotta leave it open on the top, because otherwise it just builds up all the humidity again. So people were bringing us corn and we are putting the tester on it. And uh, they said, no, it's been out in the sun all day, it's been lovely, but you put it on, it's up to 18. And I go, well, it wasn't like that when we packed it up yesterday afternoon. So she's trying to teach them and educate them, say, look, when you pack it up, don't tie it. Don't tie it until you're gonna deliver it or do something like that. So the last lot that the people came and brought, it was only, I think it was um, about 25 kilos or 20, between 20 and 25 kilos. And uh, she said, oh no, we've learned from you to um, keep it open. And that was down to 14. So that was quite good. So just remember, like even now, if this was night time, we would have this in there, the trucks would be out. This would be in there and would have it all opened out. Even having it covered like this at the moment, because of this rain coming, even have it covered like this, that will build it back up again. So there's food for thought. Food for thought. So all the babies are going well. Big Maria's little baby, she, Big Maria goes and drops her eggs in the turkeys area, okay? So the turkeys hatch it out. And of course, they're a day apart or two days apart when they uh, hatch out. So uh, the last one hatched out today, which I've given her. So I hope it survived because... Look at the white ones, always fucking whinging. Always fucking whinging, that white one. But uh, Big Maria's little one. Oh, you got, you got your other one now? Look at his look. Look there, small he is. He only hatched out last night. So she's got three now. That's all right, I'll leave her. So the weather's really bad on the eggs. We're only getting like two eggs a day now. The weather has um, really fucked the chickens up. Really, really, really humped them up. And even on the hatching, the humidity is just so much changing on the eggs. And a lot of eggs, when you just pick them up, it's just pure liquid. You know, and it's like some will some will hatch, some won't. And you got to check it every day because you can pick it up today and shake it, nothing will happen. But tomorrow you pick it up and all here, you know, a big wet pussy slopping around. Sort of like disgusting. So you have to get rid of them because if you don't get rid of them, they'll explode and all their gooey monkey cum shit will come out all over the eggs. And then once it goes all over the eggs, the eggs can't breathe, and that's how the chicken breathes when it's inside the shell. It breathes through the pores of the shell, and if that gets covered, and you can't wash it off. You, know, you can't get the egg and stick it under the tap and give it a scrub, because these are minute, small, little, tiny, weeny, beeny, you know what, air things that they come through on. But um, that's it. So Chick's got uh, another guy interested in a goat. Which one this time they're interested in, male or female? Don't know. Sorry? Neil. So what a Tim? Tim. So after Tim, Tim's the last one that we've got left on the males. So, because um, the other, other one she's got is um, Lily. And Lily's already booked and half paid for, but he's having trouble getting rid of his goats at the moment. But that doesn't worry us because he brought that at um, four months old. And because we're still here looking after and feeding it, the price goes up. So now it's five months old, he pays the five month price. And he's already left his deposit for it and they're non-refundable deposits because we could have sold it a long, long time ago. That's how it works on the farm. So if you want a goat, it's 2,000 deposit. So you can say, I want this one. And you normally pick them up at the end of three months. Okay, but if you say, well, I want this one now, I've headmarked it now. So you pay for the price of it, it will be in three, at three months old. You give us 2,000 deposit. And if you turn around then at three months, say, oh, look, I don't want it now. 
It is, so you've lost your deposit because we could have sold that to someone else. You know what I mean? So, and that, that's the agreement. No one has a problem with that. No one has an issue with that whatsoever. And same with this guy is, he can't pick it up. He said, I'm trying to sell me other goats, you know, blah, 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 blah. And it's like, okay. So we just look after it exactly the same as we are, like normally. But instead of paying the three month price, you'll pay the four month price. And if he keeps it here till five months, you'll pay the five month price. That's the way it goes. And if he says, oh, look, I don't want it now. Okay, he loses his money and we get to sell it at five months old. More money for us. That's how it works, guys, you know. That is hobby farming. We are here to not fail. We're here. And we've got some good news. We may have an Americano coming to visit us too. I'm not going to tell you who it is. It's a big surprise. He's a big boy too. So it's a big surprise. So we may have an Americano coming to the Aussie farm in the Philippines. All right, guys. Love you and leave you. Thanks for watching. Thanks for all your support. And like I said, thanks for all the emails and the, uh, the messages we get from people saying how much we've changed their life for the good. Thank you very much, guys. We really appreciate them thoughts from Chicken Eye. All right, guys. We're going to say catch you all later on. TTFN, don't forget, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, hit your bloody boyfriend if you want, do whatever you want. Oh, better <laughs> say hello to I. Hello. Hi, I. Hello. How are you today? Good. Good. So I's happy. Monday, she gets breakfast, lunch and dinner with us. She's very, very happy. So Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays, breakfast, lunch and dinner. And all the other days, except for Sunday, is breakfast and lunch. And unless, of course, we've got guests coming over, then she stays and does the full day with us. And she's happy because she gets extra meals. Plus she also gets bonuses off of the people who stay because she cleans their room and cleans their um, ablutions area and all that stuff, you know, because we have hot running water sometimes and we have flushing, flushing toilets sometimes. <laughs> so she also gets bonuses from people as well. So she's, she's well off. She's very, very happy. All right, guys, I'm going to say ta-da. I don't know which way the weather's going, but I've done the pig, I've done the water. Now I've just got to get out now and... Uh, what the fuck's going on over there? Oh, Brister, Red's chasing him around. If he keeps it up, we'll go back on the chain again. That's what the others were doing. Right, so I just got to feed the chickens now. So I'll say catch you all later on, guys. Thanks for watching. Please share, subscribe, or bye. Ta-da, guys. Bye.